Bon Lacal, my garden of roses. I think it's time we talk about the opioid crisis in America. Now, fentanyl has rapidly become a drug of choice in the United States, or a mixer of choice, for homeless and social security dependent individuals. The CDC analyzes drug overdose deaths and has reported recently over 5,000 opioid doses in 10 states alone for the second half of 2016, with nearly 3,000 of those deaths showing positive for fentanyl and over 700 showing positives for carfentanil and other fentanyl analogs. Despite Congress forcing UPS, DHL, Federal Express, and other shipping companies to collect the names and addresses of anyone sending or receiving a package to or from the United States post 9-11 for use by Customs and Border Patrol agents in investigations including drug crimes, the U.S. Postal Service received a pass on this due to the sheer volume of shipments they have to manage. This has led to the U.S. Postal Service being the shipment method of choice for Chinese opioid sellers to get their products, including the extremely dangerous fentanyl and carfentanil, into the United States without the slightest amount of trouble or oversight. These opioids have been the greatest cause of drug overdose deaths in places like Ohio, New Hampshire, and Delaware. And an investigation by Senators Rob Portman of Ohio and Tom Carper of Delaware uh, led to them using Google to search for websites through which people can purchase these opioids directly, having them shipped to their homes. Uh, and in their investigation, they came across hundreds of these websites uh, where you could purchase fentanyl, carfentanil, and Watson uh, 385, uh, a pill designed to act like hydrocodone, but based on fentanyl and 25 times stronger. Investigators posed as first-time buyers and focused on websites with active and responsive sellers, finding that these sellers would often offer flash sales and large discounts to any buyer who even so much as hesitated with their purchase. They would even try and upsell uh, buyers interested in fentanyl attempting to get them to buy carfentanil, which is a drug 100 times more potent and 100 times more deadly than fentanyl. By setting up purchases but not actually following through on them, the investigators collected information on the sellers, which they used to obtain transaction records, and with these transaction records, they were able to identify more than 500 transactions by over 300 buyers in 43 states, totaling over $200,000 sent to six online sellers in China. Most shipments come directly from China, however, some sellers prefer to use an intermediary shipping company in Europe or Canada to send their products to the States. Now in 2015, the U.S. Postal Service began working with Customs and Border Patrol to provide packages for inspection at five international mail centers, including the airports in Miami, Los Angeles, and New York. But the investigators described this as, at best, a needle in a haystack, especially with regards to the nearly 300% increase in shipments made through UPS since 2013. This is further complicated by the fact that only 36% of packages sent into the United States have the advanced electronic tracking data uh, provided, the kind of data that is necessary, uh, at least according to Customs and Border Patrol to perform the investigations they need to do. These enormous holes in our shipping industries make America ripe for exploitation, especially by China, who to some degree, I believe, are exporting their own opium war. And it is creating a severe public health issue with the fact that carfentanil, especially, even in the tiniest of doses, can cause overdose. China makes a lot of money off this, and uh, Donald Trump has actually spoken to Xi Jinping multiple times on the subject, desiring him to crack down on these opium sellers, which Xi Jinping appears to have no interest in doing. He'll occasionally show, uh, you know, wave his hand and say, yes, I'll do it, but nothing actually happens because of it. And the ability to track this information by the CDC is extremely difficult.
with uh, with um, the U.S. Postal Service being a private corporation uh, with its own funding uh, and being the single largest shipping company in the United States, they were given a pass on the legislation and essentially pr provide a giant loophole through which drug dealers in Mexico and China are absolutely free to transfer anything they can. And while these uh, international shipping centers at airports can be checked and packages can be turned over by USPS for inspection, this represents a tiny fraction of the amount of packages that come into the United States and even with drug dogs and increased border patrol and customs agents on on the job they're unable to check all the packages what we're seeing and i've been watching this for years is an explosion of drug trafficking which should be regulated or at least should be regulated according to the legislation that exists now but goes completely unseen because these drug dealers know the loopholes. They know how to get around loopholes when they start getting in trouble. And they, it's just a, a temporary stopgap if they end up getting caught by an investigation such as this one. And it's worth noting that 500 transactions, 300 uh, buyers in 43 states, that is a that is insignificant compared to the number of people. I mean, there were a thousand, a good thousand people addicted to opiates in uh, Washington state alone when I was still living there and looking into these things, and those numbers just keep going up. These drugs make it into the country very easily, and it has created a situation where uh, it seems almost un, uh, you know, unmanageable. And I'm, I'm glad that these senators are doing these investigations because it honestly seems like even investigative reporters have little interest in doing research that relates to the homeless and the severely impoverished social security dependent individuals. It's, it's downright disturbing to me because I've seen people on these drugs and I mean, if you don't know the effects of fentanyl, it's it's like heroin, but 10 to 25 times stronger. You take it and you are just out for the count. And a lot of these people are, of course, doing these drugs because they feel completely overwhelmed by their lives and take and have no desire to actually be conscious and cognizant of the world around them. They just want to get high and feel that euphoria. And it, it becomes a severe problem. There was one case that I read about in the report released by these senators of a, uh, a single person spending $23,000 over the span of a year in order to purchase these drugs from China. Uh, and I mean, that is an impressive amount of money considering that is more than, that's certainly more than social security can pay. So it makes you wonder what time he had to actually work and earn this money, if he earned it at all. And it, I, I mean, especially northern border country, or states, states that are along the, the, uh, the uh, uh, um, Great Lakes borders and Canadian borders are at a, a very strong risk because even if we deal with the issue of uh, the United States Postal Service, these Chinese companies still have traffickers who can cross the border very easily by boat into uh, Pennsylvania, into Ohio, into Indiana, who can travel directly into Vermont and New Hampshire and just sell their drugs directly both to individuals and to resellers who cut the drug and sell it themselves. What were... This is a, a major issue that gets almost no media attention, and I think more people need to spend time talking about it, because these drugs destroy lives, they destroy families, and they, it's, once you're on them, the odds of overdosing are extremely high. 
especially when it comes to these heavily concentrated versions of the, of the synthetic opiates, such as fentanyl and carfentanyl. It's, it absolutely breaks my heart. If you know someone who's on these drugs, please talk to them. Try and get them hope. There is a new um, uh, uh, waning drug. Uh, 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 excuse me, let me look, double check it because it's. Um, I just want to make sure I've got the name right. Naloxone, which is used in place of uh, methadone for helping people with treatment with the addiction. And it's actually very easy to get in the United States if you're an addict. You just have to admit that you're an addict and request help and go to a methadone clinic in order to pick up a daily dose of Noxalone until you're able to wean yourself off the drugs. Unfortunately, it really does take someone caring about the person for them to even feel like it's worth it to wean themselves off. So you have to help these people. You have to show them that they're not alone. And as far as the government goes, I highly doubt any sort of regulation is going to fix this anytime soon. The problem needs to be solved with mental health programs and drug addiction assistance programs and work programs. And I know you might say that work programs will only provide them more means for which to get their drugs. However, if these people are coming in high, they're going to get fired. But the people who get a job and feel like what they're doing has some sort of value, if not in the greater world, but to themselves, they're far more likely to get off the drug or at least replace it with something growing to be legal, marijuana. And in that case, they can be saved from this disturbing epidemic of drug addiction and uh, opioids being pushed in this country by foreign nations. Thank you for listening, and I'll catch you next time, my loves. Mm -hmm.